Hi, welcome to the bond valuation model. So we're going to do the first start out with uh, bond A here is complete. Uh, so I'm going to start with bond B here. And this is going to be the basic bond model with just an annual coupon. So first thing I need to do is calculate the coupon. And it's simply the, bond, the par value times the annual coupon interest rate. I have 20 years of maturity and uh, price yield. So now over here, we got the required rate of return. So really price to yield is the required rate of return. And I'm just going to shrink this a little bit. Okay. And you see here that the par value, we're going to calculate this using an Excel formula. So this is going to be what we call the future value is the par value because that's we're going to receive a thousand dollars in the future when the bond is due. So then we have the payment, the coupon payment in Excel that would be called the PMT. And then we have the years to maturity and this would be N per, which is number, stands for number of periods. And then we have the rate. So if we're going to ca calculate the price of the bond, we want to use a function. So I'm going to go to formulas, insert function, and then use the present value formula. So now I can take the rate, N per, payment, future value. Now what's going to happen is it's going to deliver, since we're basically calculating the price of the bond as it should be priced today, we're calculating PV or present value. And that's always expressed um, <clears throat> as a negative. Now if you get these hashtags here, whenever you get that, it just means you got to pull in the formula a little bit. So we'll just do it like that. And if you don't like that negative, you can always just do multiply by negative one at the end to convert it to a positive amount. Okay. So moving over here, um, it's going to be the same set of instructions. And then the, again, the bond price, we use the rate. And per is 30, payment is the coupon payment, future value is the par value. And I'm going to say, I can actually do minus negative one, multiply by negative one here, right in the par value, in the future value to get that. Oh, that didn't work. Let me just take that out. Okay, so I'm going to put the minus, multiply by negative one here outside the parentheses. Okay, so that's a simple bond. You're probably, you're going to be asked to do a more complicated formula for a semi uh, coupon payment, which means the which most bonds are paying a coupon twice a year every six months. So in that case, when you calculate the semi coupon payment, you're going to take the we'll start out with a the par value multiplied by the annual coupon percentage, and then we're going to multiply that by we're going to divide that by the frequency of the coupon. So a $70 coupon annually would be a $35 coupon semi-annually. Okay, so to price out the bond, again, we're gonna use the present value function. So here, let me just close this for a second. So we see here that we have, I'm gonna copy this over. Okay, so we get the functions in here as well. So let me open up the present value again. I'm going to put in the rate, which is the required rate of return, the N per. Now in this case, since there's 10 years of maturity, I do have to multiply that by the frequency because it's going to be um, twice a year. So to calculate the N per, I need to take the years to maturity and multiply it by the frequency because it mature, it has a twice a year compounding. Payment is going to be the semi-annual coupon payment, and the future value is the bond par value. So I'm going to hit done, and again, to get that negative result, it's going to multiply by negative one to make that into a positive number. Okay. 
So let's move over to do bond C. I'm going to use that same methodology. Use the, um, first, let's calculate the coupon payment. Par value times annual rate divided by frequency. And then for the bond price, use the present value function. We have the rate, required rate of return we're, we're pricing the bond to. N per is going to be the years of maturity times the frequency of, of the coupon. Payment is the coupon. And future value, I'll just put a negative here in front of the future value of the par value and see if that, I don't know, that's not going to make it the result I want. So let me just keep it back to that. Okay, say done. And again, because the bond price today is the present value and that's expressed as a negative, but I think in finance we like to see this as a, as a regular dollar amount. Okay. Now, the you can do the, I'll let you do the bottom three on your own since I just went through this three times. Let's move over to yield, year to maturity. Close this right now. Okay, so calculating yield to maturity. So here we have the first cash flow is going to be the price of the bond when you buy the bond. Then we're going to be receiving interest for the next 10 years, and then we're going to get the par value back in year 10. So here there's a little note to use the internal rate of return function to calculate the yield to maturity. So I'm going to go here and I type in internal rate of return. And this simply is I'm just going to highlight all the values here and hit done. And you see here that I get 8.77. And to do that again, I could do that down here. It's very simple. You just highlight the whole group and done. And you get their return. So now let's use the same bond features here in a different layout. Uh, so here's one. It's the same bond. So the par value is 1,000. Coupon rate is 10%. Interest payments per year are one. Interest payments are $100 per year. And the years of maturity are 10. And the current bond price is 1080. So you see here, Here's the 1080, here's the 1000 plus $100 a year. So it's the same problem, it's just not laid out in a cash flow. But here we could use the rate function to calculate the internal rate of return. So we would need the N per is 10, and the payment is the interest payment. You see how I put the, the notations here uh, for Excel, so it makes it a little bit easier. The present value is 1080. Future value is 1,000. So if I hit done, I get that seven. That's 877, which is the same calculation here. So it's just two different ways of calculating the same result. And if I do it again here using rate one more time, um, let me just move these. It's nice to have the Excel function next to the actual description. Okay, so rate and per the years, this is, there's no, since it's a one time a year calculation, we don't have to uh, multiply by two. Payment, present value, future value. And then it will calculate the rate for us. Okay. So pretty simple here. So let's move on to duration. And as always, I have the formulas backed up and equations here at the back of the spreadsheet. So if you can look at some of the notation in any of these formulas, they're back here. But let's look at duration here. Okay, so to calculate duration, let me make this bigger so you can see it better. There's two problems here. Here's the first problem. <clears throat> okay, so what we have here in the first problem is I'm going to finish the first problem. Some numbers are already filled in here, but what we have here is a calculate the, the duration for a seven and a half percent bond 
a 15 year bond price to yield at 8%. So in the first, to, to calculate the cash flows, um, it's going to be $75 from year, year one. Notice I'm not including year zero here. So the first, the first year we get our interest and the last year we're going to get our par value back plus the interest. So this last year will be 1,075. Now, we have calculated here the present value uh, factor at 8%. So the formula I put in here to calculate the factor is I used 1 divided by 1 plus C7, which is the 8%. And I have the dollar signs there because I'm going to lock that down as an absolute to elevated to A8, which is the year. So this could just, once this formula is uh, in, in place, you can just copy this down and it will create the factor for all the years. Now in the column four, present value of annual cash flows, we're simply just going to take the annual cash flow and we're going to multiply it what is this plus doing here? We don't want to copy cells here. All right. it's just how to get rid of that plus sign so you could see it. So basically we just took the 75 and we multiplied it by to calculate this. And I'm going to put this should be in currency terms. I don't like the accounting. I like the dollar sign next to Right, so I can pull this down. Okay, this is a factor, and then this would be a dollar sign. <clears throat> now, for the current price of the bond, here we would just take the D8, which is the cash flow, divided by E7. So, for E7, this is the current price of the bond. So this will give me a percentage um, compared to the current price of the bond. And then pull that all the way down. Okay. Now to get the relative weight of the cash flow, I'm simply going to multiply the year times E. So as I pull that down, and then to get the duration, I'm just going to find the sum of this column. And it gets 9.36 years. So I need to hold this for 9.36 years to protect myself for the duration of the bond. Now, in this problem here too, I just completed the annual cash flow for the 15 years. So we don't actually need to calculate this column here. If we use the future value function, in Excel. So you see here formulas, future value. So I can take um, J7, which would be the uh, rate that we're using. So we're this bond is price to yield at 6%. So we use that 6%. H1 would be the N per, payment would be zero, and the future value would be this uh, cash flow. But I put a negative in, so it would calculate as the positive. So we get the 94. So if I was to do that again, I'm going to put the rate in here, but I'm going to put this in absolutes so this doesn't drift. And then N per is going to be the year. Payment is zero and future value is going to be cash flow. It's drifted to H7, but we want... Oh, that's why, because I did that. So let's just go here, and I want to do that lock in J7. Okay, so I've hit OK, done. I get 89. So if I pull this down, uh, that's not working. Why is that not working? H9, I9. Oh. There we go. 
Okay, so then this gives us the amount here. Similar duration. So it's, so we could use that present value function here rather than, no, oh, I actually, something's messed up here. Just want the present value function. There we go. Okay, so using, instead of what we did in the first problem was we calculated the time value money formula, calculate the factor, and then multiply the factor times the annual cash flow. But with Excel, we don't need to calculate this column. We can just go straight to the present value function and fill in the corresponding boxes to get the direct present value of the cash flows. Uh, then from there, you can use the K divided by else, um, K divided by L7, the, the current bond price, this is the current bond price, to get the factor percentage. So here if I go home, and I can, you, can, you can show these as percents, and they're going to add up, should add up close to 100%. This is breaking up, you know, $1,000 is 33%, sorry, $458 is 33% of the current bond. So it's just looking at the percentages. So we can do a relative weight, which is simply just H divided by L to give us a relative weight. Adding these, the sum of these relative weights gives us the duration. But there's an easier way of calculating duration. Rather, this is the, basically the way the textbook works. But we could use Excel duration formula function. We simply go to formulas function and we can select duration. So now this is, you see how there's 15 years here. This is a 15 year bond. So I started it at um, 2020 to um, 2034, and this is 15 years because the zero counts as a year. So if I do the settlement start date, the maturity date, and put in those 15 years there, the coupon of the bond is 10%. And you can tell that because it's a it's a $1,000 bond having a $100 coupon a year. So that would be 10%. The uh, yield, we're yielding it to 6%. Uh, frequency is it's annual and the basis is uh, I'm just going to put one for the basis so it's the type of date count to use so I'm just going to use one and hit uh, done and you'll see that I get the same duration here but much simpler to use the Excel function because but you just have to line it up differently so this would be 15 years here doesn't work but this would be 15 years basically what we're showing here the coupon which is 10 percent which is going to be since the par value is a thousand and the interest the cash flow is 100 we know it's 10 percent the bond per yield and then the frequency and we get, can calculate the duration easily using this duration formula so either way those are just two different ways you could calculate duration go a step further and we can use the modified duration formula in Excel as well. So remember this is the so I'm just going to put these the frequency here. to label those titles. So if we want to do a modified duration, we can go into formulas again, function, and we would just want to do M duration for modified duration. And then you can use the settlement, maturity, coupon, yield, and frequency is one. 
So this would be the modified duration. So it's easy to calculate the modified duration as well. Okay, so that's the end of chapter 11, uh, computational problems utilizing Excel. Hope you found that useful and I'll talk to you soon.